Can you just give people a basic picture of what evolutionary psychology is and how does it differ from non-evolutionary psychology? Sure. Most of psychology is built around the desire to understand cause and effect. Um, in my part of psychology, often the way we understand cause and effect is to say there's some variable out there, there's some feature of the world, some characteristic of a social situation you're in that seems to create this effect. So someone insults you, you want to retaliate or you fume about it, or you say something nasty about it, or you want to harm them. So the, the general way you approach this work is to kind of assume there is some event in the world and some response in the world. And so what you're trying to establish to some extent is, you know, is that an effect real? Does, you know, is there this causal link? And then if you can establish that there is one, then you want to sort of say, well, what's going on in the middle to make that effect happen, you know? So someone harms you and you feel resentment or you feel some sort of feeling or you suddenly, what comes to memory or other insults from the past that make you even angry or something. And then you want to retaliate. Evolutionary psychology, but to, but to a large extent, what happens when we're thinking about that middle part is we just sort of, it's a black box. It's this impenetrable black box. It's the human head. Something's going on in there. We kind of don't know. We wave at it and we assume, well, you know, somehow the mind is ending up feeling vengeful because of this, this harm that's just happened. Evolutionary psychology, the way I think about it is an insistence on not black boxing the mind. Mm -hmm. What you actually want to do even when you're studying social behavior, even when you're studying interpersonal relationships, how people harm each other, help each other, cooperate, uh, you know, undermine each other, whatever it is you're studying, talk to each other, convince each other. We don't want to black box what's going on in the head. Instead, we want to assume that there are active tools in the head, computational mechanisms that natural selection designed to perform specific kinds of jobs that are ultimately doing that work of mediating the relationship between these environmental events, you know, our social lives and the ways we behave in response to the social lives. So natural, so, uh, pardon me, evolutionary psychology is just psychology. But what we try to do is take very seriously the fact that you don't get the mind for free. You can't, you know, it, it's, it's, not an, it's not a solution to a problem. It's the problem for psychologists understanding the cognitive processes that create behavior is that's the whole game. And, and so we often just sort of say, well, there's clearly something going on, but we want to understand how information from the world is getting processed and producing behavior. And by understanding, you know, input output relationships, trying to make some inferences about the ways in which natural selection actually built our minds. So we can figure out what is in a sense the mind for, if we can figure out what it's good at doing and bad at, at what it's doing, uh, what it's bad at doing. Our hope is we can figure out what the functions of all those circuits are, what the functions of all these cognitive processes are. So we're trying to link information processing, you know, the mind as a, basically a collection of little computers with the theory of natural selection to figure out, like, what are the cool programs in there? What did we evolve to do psychologically and behaviorally? So there's nothing controversial about it, really, if you take that step back and you just say, like, we're just trying to reverse engineer the mind and figure out what kind of circuits are in there. Hmm. And another way of putting it is that it's just evolutionary biology, which is uncontroversial, applied to the brain and the mind, right? That's a exactly right yeah the it the two tools i think that are the most important tools for psychology probably ever are the theory of natural selection and the computational theory of mind or if you like you can call it the information processing theory of mind 
The theory of natural selection tells us that what evolution produces are really cool tools that enabled populations of organisms to get important work done. And what work was that? That was work that enabled evolving individuals to increase their reproductive success. That's what natural, so natural selection builds cool things. It builds design. The information process, and that, and that applies to minds as well as to bodies. It applies as, you know, to humans as well as to non-human animals. That's how we get structure. That's how we get features in the biological world, including, including the human biological world, that enable us to get interesting jobs done. So we're not just blobs of cytoplasm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think part of why it's um, controversial is that if you if you accept evolutionary psychology as a way of thinking, then you have to accept that there is such a thing as human nature. And though that though human nature might allow for a, a, a vastly wider spectrum of behaviors than say dog nature, that there's there's nevertheless a conversation to be had about how we are programmed at birth, right? That, that, that might put limits on limits that are nevertheless much wider than most animals, but limits nonetheless on how you can expect it, human beings and therefore societies to turn out. And that becomes controversial whenever it bumps up against politics um, and, and so on and so forth. And your book touches on actually a great deal on that sort of in the later half. 